All right, I think we are ready to start. Thank you everyone for your patience with the technical um, issues, um, but I am proud to uh, welcome our four speakers from the Department of Agriculture to talk about um, Bipartisan Infrastructure Law and Inflation Reduction Act. We have uh, Linda Delgado from the Office of the Secretary, Alyssa Charney from the Natural Resources Conservation Service, um, Margie Hoffman, uh, who works at Rural Development, um, and Andrew Johnson from the U.S. Forest Service. So thank you all um, for this. Uh, multi presenter effort. Thanks for dealing with the technical difficulties with us and over to you guys. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I'm Linda Delgado, senior advisor to the secretary of agriculture, Tom Vilsack. And over the next 40 minutes or so, our USDA team will provide you with an overview of the bipartisan infrastructure law and the inflation reduction act. So bill the infrastructure law provides USDA with an almost $9 billion investment over five years in three agencies. Um, should we go to the first slide? I don't know if you can see that. Um, provides about a billion for the Natural Resources Conservation Service Agency dedicated to the conservation of working lands, working with farmers, ranchers, forest landowners, as well as local communities. It provides about 2 billion for rural development's rural utility service focused on advancing high-speed internet in rural America. And finally, about 5.5 billion in, uh, for lands and resources um, entrusted to the Forest Service, including many landscapes, watersheds that we manage together with our federal, tribal, state, private, and other partners. Um, and of that 5.5 billion, about 400 million um, uh, was provided for a temporary pay increase for wildland firefighters. About 3 billion is for investments to reduce the risk of wildland fire and restore ecosystems, including 1 billion for a new program called the Community Wildfire Defense Program. And some of you may have heard the big news. Um, just yesterday, Vice President Harris and Secretary Vilsack announced the first round of 197 million in awards for 100 projects in 22 states for this new program, including Oregon. You'll hear, you'll, you'll hear a little bit more about that later. Um, so that's Bill, the infrastructure law, and then the IRA provides USDA with nearly $40 billion investment for programs promoting climate, smart agriculture, forestry, rural energy, forest conservation, and more. Um, and of, of course, we'll create uh, good paying jobs and protect communities from the increasing risks of wildfires and extreme heat. And of that 40 billion, about 20 billion is for conservation programs and climate smart agriculture. Over 13 billion is for clean energy investments in the rural electric system. And almost 5 billion is for forest service programs, including 1.5 billion for the urban community forestry program, which I'm sure you all are very interested in. And that that is real significant new investment because it's up from being a $40 million program. So from 40 million to 1.5 billion over 10 years. So together with the infrastructure law investments, um, this is really a historic once in a generation investment an opportunity for farmers, foresters, and ranchers and communities that USDA serves. We are now in year two of bill implementation and about six months into IRA implementation. As you all know, equitable access and opportunity is a high priority. Um, we are actively looking to deepening investments with current partners and developing partnerships with new partners. The agency, um, all of our agencies have held dozens of virtual and in-person sessions. So I'm sure, I sure hope a good number of you have engaged with our agencies already in the many interactive public stakeholder listening sessions, workshops, consultation processes, and program webinars we have offered. So nutshell is infrastructure implementation and spending is in full swing. And IRA funding availability announcements have been made in some areas, for example, the NRCS and Forest Service programs funding availability have been announced in the last month. And in the near future, um, we'll be announcing funding availability for rural development programs. So this is a great time to meet with you all. We're very grateful for this opportunity. 
I can't see who's online, but I hopefully um, it's a mix of representatives from the state, local municipalities, tribal nations, and other partners. And I really want to emphasize that you're all critical components of effective implementation of these investments. So thank you for joining us today. Um, take it to slide two. Yep. So I do want to share this quick slide. Um, there, there are just a huge number of resources that exist online. Our individual agency websites, of course, provide links to specific programs for available funding. And um, just to note that for IRA, uh, there is a White House guidebook and a soon to come guidebook for tribal nations. So with that, um, without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleagues. Um, first will be Alyssa Charney, Chief of Staff for the NRCS. Then Margaret Hoffman will speak. She's the Rural Development State Director for Oregon. And then Andrew Johnson, Forest Supervisor for Region 2 will speak. Each of them will speak for about 10 minutes. Um, they will outline Bill and IRA. Funding received by their agencies provide some examples of investments in Oregon, and then touch on new partnership opportunities and how to apply. And I think at the end of their presentations, hopefully we'll have time for about, uh, for about 10 minutes of Q&A. So with that, thank you very much. I'll hand it over to Alyssa. Thank you so much, Linda. Um, and I am calling in from my phone, so I will be following the slides, but we'll need uh, assistance just making sure that we're, we're moving things along. Um, so, hi everyone, Alyssa Charney, Chief of Staff here at um, USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service. We can move along to slide five. Just some quick background on NRCS and what we do. We support um, private landowners, farmers, ranchers all around the country in providing conservation assistance. We do this both through technical and financial assistance. We have more than 2,300 service centers, more than 10,000 staff across the country, and it's really those those boots on the ground who are who are getting this important work done. We work um, both in rural communities as well as urban conservation work. We've got the Office of Urban Agriculture and innovative production that is also housed within NRCS. So moving to slide six, a quick overview of those investments that came to NRCS, both through the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law as well as through the Inflation Reduction Act, starting with the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. As Linda mentioned, nearly $1 billion in funds went into our existing watershed programs. Uh, because these were existing programs, we were able to move very quickly and get these dollars out through three different programs. The first one being the Watershed and Flood Prevention Operations Program. This program allows us to work directly with um, entities of, of government who are those sponsors to protect and restore watersheds, small watersheds compared to some of the other um, infrastructure work that's done, but really important. We also received funding for our rehabilitation program. So to look at a lot of that aging infrastructure dams that need to um, be updated to be able to, to meet standards, protect the communities that they are serving. And then we also received funds for the Emergency Watershed Protection Program or EWP. This is the program that steps in to help communities build back after they um, have faced a, a natural disaster. So all really critical programs that NRCS operates, a huge opportunity through bipartisan infrastructure law. Um, so we can move next to slide seven, just to highlight quickly. Um, so as I mentioned, we have gotten funds out the door largely for um, bill funding. There were three different watershed programs that were funded in Oregon. Um, I have listed these up on the screen and the specific funding amount that went through these programs. These three um, were all watershed and flood prevention operations programs. They went directly to the irrigation district. That would be the, the, the sponsor of those projects. Um, these projects are super important as we're thinking about drought and water um, supply challenges in the West. They are to support modernizing irrigation infrastructure. So this allows um, these irrigation districts to really work to offset the, the impacts of those droughts that we're facing. They will be continuing to do work like open um, converting open irrigation canals into pipes. So we're trying to deliver water in a more efficient way. Um, and these are really multi-benefit projects. So not just thinking about that water supply, but also how do we restore critical habitat um, and, and really taking a holistic approach. So NRCS will be continuing to work with these three irrigation districts as we build out these projects. 
Um, and we're, we're really glad to, to see the significant investments going, going into Oregon. Um, so I will move next to slide eight to touch on the Inflation Reduction Act. This is kind of, we spent last year getting bill funds out the door. We are now taking this once in a generation opportunity to implement the Inflation Reduction Act. On this slide here, you can see a more detailed breakdown of those $20 billion in additional funds for NRCS conservation programs. I will not go through it now, but I think the, the short story is NRCS operates a, um, a suite of voluntary incentive-based conservation programs that address multiple resource concerns. What the IRA did was to say, we are going to provide additional investments through these existing programs that farmers and ranchers already know and trust but specifically target them to climate mitigation benefits. Um, so we have been working quickly to get these dollars out the door. They provide, the IRA provided funds for FY23 through FY26. So we um, have announced an opportunity for FY23 funds and we will be continuing to roll these out. So moving down to slide nine, um, this is just an overview of kind of what, what the opportunities truly are for these programs like the Environmental Quality Incentives Program, Conservation Stewardship Program, Regional Conservation Partnership Program um, to serve farmers and ranchers in directly mitigating climate change, taking on conservation practices on their land, um, regardless of size, location, the type of operation, and, and getting those additional investments on the land. So moving down to slide 10. Um, this just provides a, a quick overview and you can get all of these more detailed resources on our website in terms of how we are targeting these investments for FY23 to a specific list of practices that provide quantifiable climate mitigation benefits. We have opportunities for facilitating practices as well to ensure that we're taking a, a holistic approach to conservation on um, private working lands. So moving down to slide 11. We can, this is just kind of this concept of facilitating practices. So as we are working, especially in some of our Western states to think about how do we ensure that these tools work um, for um, a diverse set of regions and challenges, this allows us to, to make sure we're, we're really thinking about a systems approach. So moving down to slide 12, um, this provides an overview of Fund. So, as I mentioned, we are moving forward with fiscal year 23. Um, just a month or so ago, we provided guidance and allocations to our states for them to hold sign up opportunities for, for EQIP and CSP. These are the programs that producers can apply to directly. These funding amounts on the, on the screen are the funds that were specifically went to, to Oregon for the state to administer. So, holding state sign up, doing outreach, et cetera. Um, for the conservation easement program, as well as for the regional conservation partnership program. These are partner driven projects. And so we are running a national sign up for ASAP and we will be putting out a funding opportunity announcement um, later this spring for RCP. So next slide um, here, just really emphasizing, especially on those um, ladder projects, the importance about state level partnership opportunities, um, whether you are an individual or an organization, those partner partnership opportunities at the state level will be critical to, to build the capacity that we that we need to deliver these additional investments in Oregon and across the country. So next slide on 14. This is just highlighting this intersection that I mentioned in terms of the Inflation Reduction Act and Western Water. We have a new framework out that really allows our states to identify and leverage that intersection between climate smart agriculture and um, Western water strategies, drought mitigation, et cetera. So lots of tools and resources here that we encourage folks to, to access. Um, moving down to the next slide, here's just more details in terms of producers and the process for applying. Um, I highly recommend for folks in Oregon to make sure you are connected to um, your state, local, field level NRCS folks. Our state conservationist, Ron Alvarado, is wonderful, a wealth of information, and, and his team um, are your best resource as you look to navigate these additional resources available through the Inflation Reduction Act. Next slide, 16. Um, this is just more details in terms of timeline process. If you click 
and follow the link. We have um, information about all of the different ranking deadlines for our existing conservation programs, including these opportunities through the Inflation Reduction Act. This will be updated regularly. Um, applications carry over to the next year as well. So especially as we ramp up in additional funding coming in through the Inflation Reduction Act, this will be an opportunity for folks to, to continue to be considered um, and access these opportunities in these later years. So with that, I think slide 17, I will, I will wrap and um, happy to address any questions later on and, and appreciate the opportunity to, to visit and, and the interest in the opportunities through NRCS. So either back over to you, Linda, or over to um, rural development. Thank you so much. My name is Margie Hoffman. I'm the state director for rural development here in Oregon, which is one of the sub agencies of the United States Department of Agriculture. Um, USDA rural development is one of our only agencies that is targeted exclusively at serving rural America. So we have 40 different programs through rural development um, that look at each um, aspect of community and economic development that might be necessary in some of our more rural communities. Um, first, I wanted to start with the investments through the bipartisan infrastructure law that funding primarily went to our reconnect program. Um, we are one of several agencies. I know you heard from the FCC earlier today, but we're one of several agencies that's focused on closing the digital divide. Our focus primarily is on um, some middle mile, but predominantly end of mile connection for our most remote and rural citizens, making sure that they have access to the digital economy. We received $2 billion to the reconnect program under the bipartisan infrastructure law. And so this can go towards construction, improvement, acquisition of facilities, and even towards some pre development work that are required to stage up projects. Um, so in FY22, we invested over $63 million in Oregon broadband projects. One of my favorite was going to Clear Creek Communications and just outside of Clackamas. Um, they received a $7 million grant to connect just over 1,200 people to the digital economy and make sure they have access to high-speed internet for things like telemedicine purposes and also um, remote access for, for learning. We also provided over $20 million to the Oregon Telephone Company, which is a pretty significant project out in Eastern Oregon, and that will connect a lot of those rural residents to the digital economy as well. Um, that was the bipartisan infrastructure law. In the Inflation Reduction Act, the funding that we received from Congress largely focuses on two programs. Um, one is the Rural Energy for America program, or you might know it by its acronym REAP. Um, so we got $1.7 billion for the REAP program and th over $300 million for the underutilized renewable energy technology program. Um, the purpose of the REAP program is to invest in rural small businesses and farmers and ranchers, providing them access to energy efficiency or renewable energy technology. So if you think about um, a pump pumping a farmer's well, um, we could use the REAP program to install a solar panel to, to cover um, the pumping for that. And it significantly reduces the cost of energy as well as um, cleans up our energy system. So in FY22, we invested over $700,000 in these types of projects here in Oregon. Um, I like to think about this program as increasing our economic resiliency in addition to um, cleaning up our energy or reducing the carbon emissions um, in our energy sector. So if you think about in Oregon, um, those of us who experience power shutoffs, having access to renewable energy projects on site can help keep packing houses open, can help keep local production open um, and functioning while the grid is down and certainly can help keep farmers farming and ranchers ranching. So I think this program is a really critical piece to not only uh, remaking the energy infrastructure in the, the West, but also building more local resiliency into the system as well for the citizens who are living out in some of these remote areas. Um, in addition to the REAP program, we received funding for one of our electric programs. So in the Inflation Reduction Act, we received over $12 billion to USDA for loans and grants. The purpose of this is to really work with um, rural utilities to help invest in them modernizing their 
grid. And that modernization can look um, like, you know, smart grid technologies, increasing the resiliency of their transmission system to installing wind, solar, and other energy in the, um, infrastructure to help provide more reliability in their systems. Um, we have invested a significant amount of, of this capital in Oregon. So um, Utila Electric Co-op got a huge um, grant slash loan from us to help modernize their infrastructure. And you can see the ways in which they're utilizing this, this funding. Um, but this is a huge program that will help significantly across rural Oregon. So for more information, um, what I like to tell people um, the first step is just to call me. Uh, this is my contact information or send me an email. Um, we'll follow up with it as well. And I can put you in touch with the right person at rural development here in Oregon. We have about just over 30 employees across six different field offices throughout the state in our state office in Portland. And so we would love to work really closely with those of you who have projects or might have projects and help vet those. And, get you started um, down the pathway towards implementation. So that concludes my portion of the presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions at the end. And I just wanna say thank you for the opportunity to participate in this um, presentation. And with that, I will turn it over to Andrew Johnson. Um, Hello, everybody. Andrew Johnson. Um, I'm the deputy team leader for the Forest Services Wildfire Risk Reduction Infrastructure Team, which is leading our implementation of the wildfire crisis strategy. If you go to the next slide, please. All right, so the bipartisan infrastructure law and the Inflation Reduction Act have allowed the Forest Service to make historic investments in what we are calling a wildfire crisis strategy. We launched the strategy in 2022 as an effort to uh, expand our efforts to protect communities, critical infrastructure, and make forests more resilient to both climate change and the increasing wildfire risk. Um, we know that America's forests are in a state of fire emergency. Nearly a quarter of the contiguous United States remains at moderate to very high risk of severe wildfires. Um, and the Forest Service is leveraging science to show us where the highest risk fire sheds, those areas of national forest system lands and, and, uh, and all lands, you know, state and private lands as well, um, where there is the greatest risk of wildfire and impacts from wildfires and how we can put these historic investments to work to reduce risk. So we'll go to the next slide. So specifically in Oregon, um, we've identified three landscapes where we're making significant investments. Three of, we're making 21 landscape investments across the Western United States, three of which in Oregon. Um, the Central Oregon landscape um, announced in, in 2022 with initial funding from, from BIL. Uh, we're now investing 13.2 million in FY23, um, looking to reduce risk there in Central Oregon. Another new project, the Mount, uh, Mount Hood Wasco County Collaborative, with a four and a half million dollar investment in this year in FY23. And then a, a large project that spans the Oregon California border on uh, the Klamath River Basin with an investment of 35.4 million this year. These targeted investments are really looking to, to focus our work um, reducing wildfire risk through fuel treatments, um, including uh, uh, timber harvest and prescribed burning, um, trying to protect, uh, make significant strides forward in protecting communities um, from, from wildfire risk and, and bringing those communities to a point where, where wildfire can play its natural role on the landscape without significantly putting lives and in, in private, in private lands and homes and, and infrastructure at risk. Um, so next slide. So we know that wildfires do not recognize boundary lines and management jurisdictions. And so community wildfire defense grants directly support the wildfire crisis strategy by investing in work across state, private, and tribal lands to protect communities, infrastructure, and natural resources from the threat of wildfires. Just this week, the Forest Service and, um, and the department announced uh, $23.5 million in investments in Oregon across 10 uh, specific community wildfire defense grants. Um, these projects include fuel treatments and community wildfire protection plan development and updates to uh, some existing plans. 
these CWDG funds are competitively awarded through a notice of funding opportunity announcements. There'll be an additional opportunity for more uh, proposals in later in this fiscal year, and the agency will host webinars uh, uh, for potential applicants and communities to learn more about community wildfire defense grants and how they can submit a proposal. Next slide. The agency is also making um, uh, some other diverse investments across Oregon uh, through different uh, funding opportunities from IRA, from Bill, and others, um, including uh, aquatic and forest restoration projects. Uh, in FY22, the agency established the Collaborative Aquatic Landscape Restoration Program. We're investing $26 million over five years to 89 projects that will restore 600 miles of waterways, enhance 500 miles of stream habitat, um, there'll be a, a, an internal uh, agency call for additional projects. So National Forest across Oregon will be able to propose additional projects uh, in the early summer of this year. Um, but already we're investing um, $4.3 million across 13 different projects in three national forests in Oregon um, under this program, as well as 880,000 and specifically to uh, collaborative aquatic landscape restoration projects in Oregon. We know that uh, forests need investment to recover from wildfires, um, the wildfires that have occurred in recent years. Um, we're making additional investments of $1.7 million in three projects across Oregon um, for burned area recovery. And then leveraging additional funds from uh, um, the bipartisan infrastructure law to make $1.35 million investments in legacy roads and trails. This work is specifically around um, improving um, access to the national forest and reducing the risk of sedimentation and uh, um, and trail damage and tra road and trail damage and those effects those have on aquatic areas. Um, so some um, additional investments in our legacy road and trail network. Um, and then thanks to funds from the bipartisan infrastructure law, we're able to invest $954,000 in seven uh, recreation sites and cabins projects. This is a, a really interesting provision in the bipartisan infrastructure law, a uh, total of $37 million um, uh, nationally and uh, some of that portion of that coming to, uh, to Oregon. And again, we'll have another round of proposals for additional projects this year. Uh, next slide. So in total, Oregon received 29.9 million in fiscal year 22 from state, private, and tribal forestry branch of the Forest Service. Um, of this, 1.7 million from the bipartisan infrastructure law was granted to state agencies to implement the state forest action plan, as well as bolster wildfire response, um, and an additional 10.5 million for wildfire recovery. Uh, the quantified wildfire risk assessment project for the Pacific Northwest is in the process of being updated with the final product expected in June of 2023. Oregon Department of Forestry, the Nature Conservancy and Oregon State University have all been key partners in this work to identify highly valued resources and assets. Um, and the response, uh, those assets would have to wildfire. Oregon is currently updating their 20 year plan with the final plan due to the state legislature in the summer of 23. And the Forest Service has been an active participant in this process to ensure an all lands approach is achieved in, in our efforts and the state's efforts. Uh, Morgan's 20 year strategic plan will be used to prioritize restoration actions and geogra uh, uh, geographies to reduce the risk of catastrophic wildfires and direct state, private, and federal investment. Next slide. So we know that taking care of our wild, uh, wildland firefighters is critical um, as they work to, to uh, reduce the impacts of wildfires on communities. And so we are in the final stages of identifying which positions will be moved into a new wildland firefighter job series um, that more accurately describes the work and risk that our firefighters face. Um, so we're working on a tool that will allow uh, employees who are currently wildland firefighters to opt into this new job series, um, help uh, ensure that they understand what that means um, for them in their career. Uh, and then in uh, um, as far as wildland firefighter pay, in, as of February uh, of this year, we uh, 12,500 uh, Forest Service firefighters have received a uh, pay supplement totaling $241 million, um, thanks to investments from the bipartisan infrastructure law. Uh, and we, are gonna, we intend to continue those payments through uh, this fiscal year, uh, fiscal year 23 through, through September 2023. Um, and this uh, bill authority provides um, uh, us an opportunity to establish programs for permanent, temporary, seasonal, and year-round wildland firefighters and to recognize and address mental health needs, including post-traumatic stress disorder care. We'll implement the program in two phases. 
Phase one will assess needs and build capacity needed for the program. And phase two will focus on the program development, leveraging resources and um, and fulfilling the needs that are identified through that process. So making good strides to take better care of the wildland firefighters that protect communities across the Western United States, all over the country, and, and particularly in Oregon. Um, so next slide. So lots of opportunities uh, moving forward to engage with the Forest Service in a variety of work. Um, uh, much of the funds I'll talk about here are allocated through direct transfer from the Washington office to regions and on to the National Forest and Grasslands to support work um, across, across the country and in Oregon. Um, but our partners play a critical role in helping the agency accomplish its mission. And we fully recognize that the success of BIL and IRA investments will depend on engaging and working, working extensively with our partners, states, and tribal nations. Um, the most efficient way to learn about or engage in these opportunities is to connect with your local forest service, uh, national forest office, or district office, or regional office there in Oregon. Um, in accordance with uh, BIL, CWDG, the um, Community Wildfire Dis the Defense Grant Program, prioritizes communities that are of uh, low income, impacted by a severe disaster, or have a very high uh, fire hazard potential. So again, $197 million announced this week uh, with, a, with a good chunk coming to Oregon. Um, we've also invested $20 million in fiscal year 23 to good neighbor agreements across the states. Um, and uh, uh, good neighbor is available to states, counties, and tribal nations um, and allows those organizations to perform work on national forest system lands. And states in particular can retain the receipts and revenue from that work. Um, we'll continue to invest in the collaborative forest landscape restoration program a really successful uh, partner driven effort that's been um, in a place for about 10 years now um, in this year we're investing 31.1 million in 15 projects which include work in oregon um, among other states similarly the joint chiefs landscape restoration partnership is a partnership between the forest service and the natural resources conservation service to identify large landscape scale restoration projects that cross uh, uh, property boundaries from national forest system lands to private lands and allows the the forest service and nrcs to collaborate with landowners and, and make conservation investments on both sides of the boundary line um, and then of course the the replant act which is a new uh, reforestation initiative um, is a really a historic opportunity for us to address post Post wildland fire and unplanned reforestation needs, and we're making significant investments to scale up our ability to uh, generate seedlings and uh, and work with partners to generate additional seedlings so that we can uh, uh, do more planting um, and uh, restoring uh, forest lands after wildfires and other natural disasters. Um, so next slide. All right, that that brings it to a close for me. Thanks, everybody. Uh, there's some links to additional resources. So if we share the slides, you can click on those and, and find more information about all of the, the programs and investments that I just discussed. All right, I think back to Senator Weidenstaff. Okay. I just added this slide in case we needed it, but we don't need it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you all so much. Uh, for, for presenting. Um, really great to hear the perspectives from the different agencies. Um, we are scheduled to wrap in just a couple of minutes, so I just wanted to kind of acknowledge a couple of questions in the chat, which are mostly about if the slides will be available after the um, presentation. And so from my end, I'd love to work with you guys um, to see what is available to post on our website and distribute to participants. So. Um, other than that, other than I, Tom, I'm happy to make sure you have the URL for NRCS Oregon as well after the webinar concludes, um, but seeing no other um, questions in the Q&A box, um, I would just invite folks to um, submit Q&A to us and we'll work with you um, and the relevant agencies to get those questions answered after the webinar concludes. Um, USDA, any concluding remarks? Thank you so much for your, for your time today. I would just say thank you to all of the presenters, the USDA team. Thank you, uh, Senator Wyden and staff for the opportunity to talk to your constituents. And we look forward to strengthening our partnerships and uh, really look forward to, to doing intense work in the state. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you all again. Uh, we do have a break scheduled um, for 30 minutes. And then when we come back, um, we'll be joined by a presenter on behalf of Department of Energy um, and then following that EPA. So still lots of good information coming. Um, thank you all so much and look forward to continuing to work with you. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll be thank back you. shortly. Have a good day. Have a good day.